beautiful day. We're glad that you're here, and we're glad that uh, others will join us uh, in the recorded version of our service. Welcome to those folks as well. We take a moment for announcements. Uh, your standard bulletin remains with you, so I'm sure you're very familiar with what's in that by now, but uh, if it is new to you, there are sites where you might worship in the month of August when we are closed. Uh, on Sunday, or uh, if you want to try something different, Carmen United in the City Lines is worshiping on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. Several announcements that are not in the bulletin. We have uh, some news from Celtic Colors. We are hosting again a concert here during the Celtic Colors Festival on Thanksgiving Monday. It's a matinee at 2 in the afternoon. And the tickets for that concert are almost sold out. They're officially sold out. But uh, because uh, we are hosting, we do have 10 tickets available. Maureen and Kyle have tickets. They are $40. So uh, if you want to scoop those up, we'll have a, a genuinely local sold out concert. I believe it's, it's inevitably going to be sold out anyway because uh, Maureen tells me that it we don't sell our tickets, they'll go back to the, the uh, Celtic Colors folks and they will certainly sell them to the general public, but we would like our local people to have the first chance at them. So if you're interested in Celtic Colors on Thanksgiving Monday, just speak with Kyle or Maureen following our service today. I believe these are the announcements. Solo after sermon, okay. <laughs> That's an announcement for me. That's a reminder. And we have a little change in our song, which we will uh, point out when we get to that part in our service. In the morning I pray to you, O God. You hear my voice in the morning. At sunrise I offer my prayer and wait for your answer. Let's bow together. Holy God, you call us together to reflect on your word and our life in your world. Be with us now as we sing and pray together that we may hear your voice and understand your way. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and friend. Amen. We light our candle of prayer. As we offer our as we light this candle, we are reminded that Christ is the light of the world. May the sun shine in our hearts, that we might in turn share the light of Christ with others in the world. celebrate some of our uh, very familiar hymns, a lot of them from uh, our early experience as Christian folk. Today we join in singing as our hymn of praise, 585, Jesus Bids Us Shine, 585.
scripture readings this morning. You'll find uh, them listed in your bulletin, and we begin and continue with the uh, story of David from 2 Samuel, and we will begin our readings. Second Samuel, chapter 7, verses 1 to 14a. God's promise to David. After the king was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from all of his enemies around him, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am, living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God remains in the tent. Nathan replied to the king, Whatever you have in mind, go ahead and do it for the Lord is with you. But that night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, This is what the Lord says. Are you the one to build me a house to dwell in? I have not dwelt in a house from the day I brought the Israelites up out of Egypt. I have been moving from place to place with a tent as my dwelling. Wherever I have moved with all the Israelites, did I ever say to any of their rulers whom I commanded to shepherd my people, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now then, tell my servant David, This is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pasture from tending the flock, and appointed you ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name great, like the names of the greatest men on earth. And I will provide a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they can have a home of their own, and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people will not oppress them anymore, as they did at the beginning, and have done ever since the time I appointed leaders over my people Israel. I will also give you rest, from all of your enemies. The Lord declares you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. When your days are over and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he my Just a shift in our song today, we invite you this morning to turn in Voice of the United to page 824, 824 in our entry, where you will find Psalm 100, and we will use refrain 2. by birth and called uncircumcised 
by those who call themselves the circumcision, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenant of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, dividing the wall of hostility, by setting aside in the flesh the law with its demands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and he preached peace to you who were far away, and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people, and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. And wherever he went into villages, towns, and or countryside, they placed those who were ill in the marketplace. They begged him to let them touch even the edge of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. One of the highlights of summer in Cape Breton is surely the visit through the season and into the fall of those magnificent cruise ships we see regularly in the harbor. I don't know if we got to a four ship day. There's one four ship day coming up. I've been, I've been down for a two ship day and it's been a three ship day, but there is going to be a four ship day, so uh, keep an eye out for all of those ships. Of course, the ships are not only a source of revenue for our local economy, 
but we celebrate the opportunity to show off our island to visitors from pretty much all over the globe. I have a friend who's a tour guide for cruise ship passengers. She tells me that attractions we all know well, the Cabot Trail, the Lewisburg Fortress, the Bell Museum, and so on, bring great joy to visitors. But also there are many visitors who are amazed by the things we never think about. I recall visitors dropping by St. Andrew's Church when I was minister there. We opened the building, many downtown churches did that in the day, to anyone who wanted to come in. I discovered the same thing that my tour guide friend did. Folks liked the tourist attractions, but there were many people who were just as delighted and astonished to visit a place where there were trees everywhere, where the ocean was minutes away, where there was lots of space and not a lot of people. And it makes sense. If you grew up in the center of New York City or another large American city where tree meant a few lonely maples in the park, hills covered with forests is astounding. If you live in Kansas or Saskatchewan, your first view of the ocean is going to be astounding. I had the same experience a number of years ago when we first went to Calgary to visit our daughter Karen who lives there. Uh, they said, well, why don't we drive out to the prairie? It's a bit of a drive. If you've been to Calgary, you're in the city or there's parks and things. But if you take a drive, not that long a drive, you're out in the prairie. So, so we took the drive and of course after a while I'm looking around and saying, well, where is anything? <laughs> you know? You know, there's nothing but nothing from here to the horizon. So that was astonishing to me. And I'm sure if you dropped me in the middle of Manhattan or in the middle of Paris, I would be overwhelmed and astonished. An experience that will change who a person is. We've been reading about Jesus traveling about the villages and towns of Palestine, teaching and performing miracles then empowering the disciples to do the same. Reactions by the folks they encountered were varied, ranging from gratitude to skepticism. But there was understandably a lot of astonishment as well at the level of compassion Jesus brought to every situation. The theme of astonishment, of surprise and delight at having eyes opened to amazing possibilities runs through the Gospel writings. For example, you recall the story of the prodigal son. So he returned home to his father, and while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. He was astonished that the son he thought was lost had come home. In another section of Luke, we hear the story of the widow of Nain that Jesus restored her only son. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion for her and said to her, do not weep. And then Jesus said, young man, I say to you, rise. The dead man sat up and began to speak and Jesus gave him to his mother. The mother, no doubt, was astonished and grateful. Jesus, we know, had a way of attracting attention and drawing crowds. Today's reading from Mark he emphasizes how popular Jesus was in the communities around the Sea of Galilee. It's a record of how Jesus astonished by continually showing loving kindness, putting love into action, and empowering others to do the same. Two weeks ago we heard that Jesus sent out his disciples, and they returned eager to share the stories of preaching and healing. They did all this with Jesus' authority, which no doubt added to his growing reputation in the region. You recall last week's lesson about the beheading of John. It told us, among other things, how dangerous it was for Jesus and his followers to do what they were doing. The astonishment, the wonder, also gave rise to fear in those in authority. This is something new, this is something that challenges. We thought people were paying attention to us and that they weren't going to pay attention to anyone else. We thought they were well under our thumb. But here comes somebody who's commanding 
more attention and more devotion than we could possibly muster ourselves. Something has to be done. There's never a complete escape from the suffering of the world. And that was not the point of what Jesus and his disciples did. They came to model for us the loving kindness that makes life worth living. Because whether well or sick, whether together with others or alone, God is always in our lives, providing the loving kindness that comes from the divine, but also instilling in us that purpose and that will to be loving and kind to others. Our attention these days is often focused on Palestine and on the suffering there, and of course on other parts of the world where there is suffering and war and injustice and deprivation. <clears throat> this is not something new, we're not surprised to hear. Historians tell us that 75% of the people in ancient Palestine lived in poverty, controlled by the ruling classes and had no hope of any release. Many were powerless slaves, which helps us to understand why Jesus uses slaves so often in his story, talking about people's state and how it can change. We can imagine people would have been grateful had Jesus just offered a spark of hope or a little light in their darkness. But his presence meant so much more. Astonishing acts of kindness and renewal, hope that was real, because it was made abundantly clear that God was with the people in every circumstance. And so today we find that same witness. Jesus and his disciples needed rest, but they couldn't escape the people's needs. We know if you, if you look at a little map of, of ancient Palestine, there wasn't a lot of places to, to go there for a retreat. You couldn't, you couldn't fly off to British Columbia thousands of miles away. Uh, people knew where they were going, and they got there before them. And Jesus, instead of saying, go away, you know, we need a break here, he looked at the people, as Scripture says, with compassion as sheep without a shepherd. And he becomes the good shepherd, offering astonishing love, service, and compassion. The lesson for us could not be clearer we have been given that same spirit, that same ability to astonish with our willingness to offer compassion to those who suffer. May we take up our time, may we take up in this time and always the mission of Jesus for all time, to love, to serve, to heal, to tell of God's goodness in word and deed. Loving God, so many times in our own lives we are astonished by how good you have been to us, how you sent your Son, how the Spirit rules in all that we do. May we embody that Spirit and like the disciples go out into the corners of the earth to witness to your love.
loving and generous God, we welcome this opportunity to come before you in prayer, to offer words that are spoken and the wishes and needs of our own hearts. We thank you for this summer season, for this time together in the warmth and beauty of the sanctuary and as we look out on the beauty of nature. We thank you for the opportunity to enjoy this season, whether at home in our yards or traveling our beautiful island or going even further. We are grateful that we live in this nation where there is opportunity for all and where even those who face difficulties can look to others. Help us to be those others who follow in the steps of Christ, to be ready to act with loving kindness in every circumstance. Help us to understand that the need is great that the harvest is plentiful and that the workers are often few. Help us to be encouraged by your Holy Spirit to do what we can in word and deed. Help us not only to listen to your scripture, but to take it into our hearts and help us grow as your servants to walk in his steps every day. We pray for this community as we take approach our summer break, that we will be renewed and refreshed, and return to our sanctuary and our community of faith, renewed and again dedicated <coughs> to doing the gospel work. We pray for our wide world, for our nation, for other nations and places where the peace that we enjoy is not present. We think of Ukraine in our prayers, of the Middle East, of places we may not hear so much about in the news, but where <coughs> equally because of war, because of unrest, because of hunger, because of thirst, because of increasing natural disaster. Help us to face all the challenges that come before us to make this world a better place for all. Hear the prayer that has been spoken, hear the prayers and the needs of each life, and hear the prayer we taught us to say together. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Increase the 
and security for her family and greater ability to access education. In fact, Merritt has earned enough to send her son to college, the children of her future. Merritt needs than just so to survive and to thrive.
Oh, no. 